So when you hear the term management consulting, you may be thinking, what the heck does management consulting mean? Because it seems like it could be an all-encompassing sort of job title. And if you're a subscriber to this channel, you'll be thinking, uh, Chad, I thought you were a business improvement professional. And you're right, I am a business improvement professional. But when you look at the definition of a management consultant, business improvement, continuous improvement, these things lie under the umbrella of what a management consultant would be. Now, management consultants typically will focus on helping leadership of an organization improve the overall performance and operations. Now, this means that management consultants are often working with C-level executives, directors, very high people in the organization to improve their situations to actually resolve their problems. And most of the time, these are gonna be very complex issues. Now, when I started my career, I didn't start out at the very top talking to C-level execs and directors and helping solve complex issues. I started at the very bottom as an engineer and worked my way up through the organization. But what I learned as an engineer at the very bottom, working on how to to solve problems and improve processes at a Japanese automotive company, those things I still use to this day. And what I learned on the job and through self-study, um, working for that Japanese company at the very bottom, working my way up, that information I believe is more valuable than the degrees that I have hanging on the wall or the degrees that I earn. Now I appreciate formal education, of course I do, or I wouldn't have spent years of my life getting the degrees that I have hanging on the wall back there um, or the ones that I have stuck tucked away in drawers. But the point I'm making here is, is that a lot of folks watching this video may not have actually gotten a degree, right? You might not have a formal four-year degree. And if you don't, then I want to share some things that might inspire you to keep pursuing this field of study. Let's get started. So the first degree that I have is an industrial engineering degree. And an industrial engineering degree is a great degree for the type of management consulting that I do because industrial engineers work on making processes efficient, right? Making them more efficient. They usually integrate with workers, machines. These are systems that work together. Workers, machines, materials, information, and energy. We take all of this information, right? And we find ways to make those processes more efficient so that we can deliver the product or service more efficiently to the customer. Thereby reducing cost, maybe reducing the cost to the customer, but more than likely increasing the profit for the business. And the great thing about industrial engineers, it doesn't mean you have to work in a manufacturing plant. It means you can work pretty much anywhere. You can be an industrial engineer in a, obviously in a manufacturing setting or in an office setting. And I've done both. So when it comes to creating efficient processes or trying to make current processes more efficient, Six Sigma and Lean, continuous improvement, business improvement, this is a great niche under the management consulting umbrella. Now the second degree I have is a master's in business administration or better known as an MBA. Now as I've moved up through the sort of corporate ladder, if you will, I still do the tactical things, right? But I've gotten also more into the strategic thing where I have to do planning. I have to focus on larger scale projects that might include not just local, but global processes. And these things could be very complex and just helping someone improve a process or thinking about continuity of a business, like if a catastrophe happened. And so I think the MBA has helped me with that sort of role. At least it helped me get into that position. And mainly because I have to speak with just about everybody in the organization. So no matter what function it is, when you're thinking about the continuity of business, you have to work with every function in the business to make sure that there's crosstalk happening, that we're not working in silos. And when this happens, that means that you have to have some degree of understanding in each functional area. And an MBA kind of covers that. Now, one thing about this field is you'll notice that as you progress up through the ladder, you'll have to really grasp complex situations really quickly. I think this served me well early on in my career when I was at a Japanese automotive company because we dealt with a lot of complex issues in electronics. Uh, but as I've moved up, that switched over to complex issues in a business. And when you're working for a business, whether it be local or a global business, you're gonna be really faced with some complex, tough business choices, decisions, and processes. I'll give you an example. Going back to the business continuity, I was once asked to help lead a business continuity planning workshop for an entire global business. Having never done that before for a global business, it was a complex issue. So what I have to do is I have to dig down and really study, and I really had to learn that process and learn how to do that. Now, I had done it on a small scale, you know, been involved in uh, business continuity, planning and strategy planning for local manufacturing plants, but never for like a global operations. And so it really what it requires is someone to go in, really study, and then take that information. This is where it gets really important. Being able to take all of that information, right, that might seem complex, and, and it is in nature, and then pulling it together into a system that you can explain it really easily to everyone involved in the process. And I think that's where a lot of value comes in for folks like you and I, if we're trying to do management consulting, being able to take complex situations and contextualizing it so that people understanding it through a model, a framework, or something that they can grab 
grasp and it's easily digestible. And I find that the subjects that I studied in during my MBA, they help out with that, right? Because sometimes I get involved in some marketing things or sales calls. And I, I don't have any experience in that from, from a professional experience, but being able to uh, remember and draw from my experiences as I was in graduate school sort of helps me out with those conversations or it at least gives me the ability to go in and do some research, i.e. a Google search, right? Because we all do that to kind of refresh myself on what I'm about to talk about on what I'm about to talk about, on what I'm about to discuss with the team. Now, in addition to the two degrees I just talked about, the industrial engineering degree and the MBA, I think it's important to always keep learning, right? You want, this is like a continuous process. You want to continuously learn and build your skills. And so I learned from some of the best early on, the Japanese, they're really good at process improvement. And again, those basics that I learned then, I still use to this day. However, I think in this field, if you don't have degrees and you don't have access to sort of the coaches and mentors that I had, then it's important that you get a coach or mentor or you and not or but and you want to do both of these get some certifications right and you don't need to do this right away if you're just now entering this field but you certainly are going to need this eventually because if you don't have a degree you got to have something that says yeah i've done this i've studied this i've been trained by experts and i've also used what i learned from the experts in a real world situation to deliver value for the business. So the specific niche that I'm in, you know, they had these belts, right? Yellow belt, green belt, black belt. And they also have lean certifications. Um, I would definitely recommend getting some sort of a lean certification, some sort of process improvement certification, along with using that information, using that knowledge on the job so you can start building your resume and your skill set. because just learning it from a book, you'll know really, or you'll realize really quickly Learning it from a book is not the same as applying it in real life. The books are great for knowledge, but we have to use that information on the job and see what works, what doesn't really work that well, so we know how to change gears when we need to change gears. That's really important in the niche that I'm in. So while you may not need a degree, it certainly helps. And if you don't have a degree, you might want to consider getting a mentor, um, reading a lot of books, learning on your own, and then using that information on the job. Eventually, maybe getting some certifications. You know, the late Jim Rohn once said, formal education will earn you a living, but self-education will earn you a fortune. So if you're not interested in getting a degree, then self-education is the route you gotta go. Now, as I mentioned, you can do this through reading books and then applying what you learn on the job, but you can also find some membership sites out there that are specifically designed for your niche. And this is a great way to sort of surround yourself with like-minded people that are in the same field you are. And what you'll find from these membership sites are is that so, there's a wide array of people, but they're all like-minded. They're all in the same niche that you are. So you might find some folks that are just like you just starting out or some folks that are just like you and you might have a lot of experience. But you're gonna find this wide array of people in there that are going to be able to support you. You can bounce ideas off of them with, and they're gonna be, and it's, it's, it's almost like a, a community, if you will, of folks that are trying to accomplish some of the same goals. And in doing so, you're building this sort of camaraderie. So membership sites, are a great way to get engaged and maybe get some some of that self-education we talked about and you know some of that mentoring and coaching that you probably are going to need if you don't have a degree now these membership sites are going to set you back about 25 anywhere between 15 and 30 bucks a month probably and sometimes you can pay for a full year and get a discount but if you're interested in learning more about these membership sites and which one i recommend make sure you go down in the comment section below and just type in business improvement membership site now one of the biggest problems i see with folks in this field that either have a degree or don't have a degree. So they don't know how to articulate their experience and skill sets that they do have, even if they're not related to process improvement or the niche that I'm in right away, they don't know how to articulate what they've done in a way that grabs the attention of hiring managers. And I can tell you from experience, you're gonna have a difficult time finding a job or career in management consulting, no matter what niche, if you're not able to convey and articulate the value that you bring to the business on your resume or CV. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to pull out your resume and I want you to look at the job titles. And under each job title, do you have at least three bullet points that articulate the value that you brought to that business. Now, when I'm talking about value, I'm talking about metric based value. That means you need to be able to articulate the value that you brought in the form of metrics percentages. Like I saved this much money in dollars. So these are metrics that can be measured, right? Cause they're metrics, they're measurable. So you want to be able to articulate that on your resume so that people read the hiring managers, read that and they're like, Oh, I know that this person knows what they're doing because they're demonstrating that through the metrics that they've, or the value they've delivered to the business. Now, the other side of that is you got to speak the same language that the hiring manager wants. So whatever the niche that is, whatever management consulting niche you're in, you want to make sure you focus on that. But a good rule of thumb is always focus on quality, cost, and delivery. 
If you focus your metrics around these three key measurables, then you're probably gonna be pretty good for any of the niches under the management consulting umbrella. Certainly gonna be good for the one I'm in, which is business improvement. And how do I know this? Well, because I've been on both sides of the interviewing table for you know, 20, 25 years now, so I have a good idea of what's needed. I know what I'm looking for in a candidate that wants a job, and I know what people are looking for in me. Now, I also help folks one-on-one, -on -one, like I do some one-on-one -on -one coaching. I've been doing that for about five years now, and I can tell you that most of the time I see this very problem with all the resumes. They just aren't able to articulate what they can do on their resume or CV. So they have the skill set sometimes, or they've done these things before. They just don't know how to frame it in a way that speaks to the hiring manager. If you're trying to go for a position, you know, and you're looking up uh, jobs or careers online, then that you can go in and kind of figure out what, what they're asking for. Now, you have to articulate your value and make it fit the role you're looking for. Listen, that's all I've got for this video. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate all the support I've been getting. Make sure you subscribe to this channel if you like this kind of information. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. I'll see you all in the next video.